This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, March the 26th, 2019. It's the feast of St. Margaret Clitheroe. She was born in England in the midst of the Catholic persecutions of the 16th century, and she was born Protestant. She chose to become Catholic, which was incredibly bold. She took it a step further by building priest holes into her home and harboring priests. She was ultimately arrested and imprisoned for her faith and her actions, and the government made every effort to convince her to apostatize, but she held firm and was executed by pressing in 1586. Her dying words were, the sheriffs have said that I am going to die this coming Friday, and I feel the weakness of my flesh, which is troubled at this news, but my spirit rejoices greatly. For the love of God, pray for me and ask all good people to do likewise. It's the birthday of Tennessee Williams, who penned some of the most iconic plays in modern English. The Glass Menagerie, A Streetcar Named Desire, and Cat on a Hot Tin Roof were all written in the 1940s and 1950s. He wrote, Life is an unanswered question, but let's still believe in the dignity and the importance of the question. And the strongest influences in my life and my work are always whomever I love. Whomever I love and am with most of the time or whomever I remember most vividly. He was born in Columbus, Mississippi in 1911 and died in New York City in 1983. He's remembered along with Eugene O'Neill and Arthur Miller as one of the three foremost playwrights of 20th century American drama. Paul Erdos, on the other hand, was born across the world in Budapest, two years to the day after Tennessee Williams. Time magazine called him the oddball's oddball. He was a natural mathematician and logical thinker, but what makes him so interesting is that he collaborated with everybody. And I'm not exaggerating. In his 60 or so years of professional work, he wrote papers with 500 different scientists co-authoring. He got into discrete math, probability, graph theory, number theory, set theory, and a dozen other fields. He cracked one unsolvable puzzle after another. It was nuts. He was so prolific and worked with so many people that his many friends started assigning their friends an Erdos number, which would indicate how many degrees of separation a scientist had with someone who had co-authored a paper with him. Everyone who worked with him directly was given a number one, and everyone who worked with them, that is, co-authoring a paper, was given a number two, and so on. Today, 268,000 scientists claim their Erdos number, and the average number of those 268,000 people is five degrees of separation. The man died 25 years ago, and the average number is five. It's astounding. It's worth adding that he was a notably and notoriously awful house guest, and he hated hotels, so he insisted on staying with people he was co-authoring papers with. He would wake them up in the middle of the night and insist that they cook him toast or boil him an egg. He refused to cook or clean after himself, and he had no respect whatsoever for the time of day or the concerns of his host. And yet, he was one of the greatest minds of the 20th century, and so hundreds of people were happy to have their lives turned upside down for a week or a month in order to put their problem or their project in front of Paul Erdos. Finally, today is Purple Day, which is all about epilepsy awareness. It was started in 2008 by a nine-year-old girl named Cassidy Megan, who suffers from epilepsy. Why purple, you ask? Purple, especially lavender, acts as a relaxant, and in some cases, even as an anticonvulsant. Also, Cassidy likes purple. So if you like, wear some purple today and take the time to learn a little bit more about a disease that affects almost 40 million people worldwide. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.